Shalom Aleikum, brothers and sisters. This is, uh, again, Uriah Baraka coming at you. Uh, we're going to finish off the testimony of Yeshua with part six. Uh, we're going to be summing up everything that we have learned. We have learned that Yeshua was a keeper of the commandments. And that Yeshua taught that in order to enter into life, one must keep the commandments. This is what we have learned from the testimony of Yeshua. This is his testimony. This is what he taught, not what men teach about him, men who have their own personal goals in mind. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. This is a firm foundation on which to follow the Messiah, Yeshua. Keeping his commandments, not only keeping them, but to fulfill, he told us that he did not come to batal, destroy from the law or from the prophets, but to fulfill all, to fulfill every yod, every minuscule element that is contained within the Torah and the commandments of Yahuwah. He came to fulfill. And he also teaches us in Matthew 5, uh, uh, verse 17 to 20, this is where this is found, that we ourselves should kayim or kayam, kayim, I think is the proper translation, kayim, fulfill, fulfill, complete, bring to an end, an ultimate goal. That's what the word end means. It doesn't mean that the law has ended because it is fulfilled. It means that you have achieved the ultimate goal for which the commandments was given. But it says here, Yeshua teaches us in from the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew, Veha Kayin, Veha Nilimed, Godol Yikra, Bemokut Shamahim. He says, and he that fulfills and that teaches is called great in the kingdom of heaven. Bamakut Shamayim. He is called great. Those that do not fulfill or have this purpose in mind, it says in Matthew 5, 15 to 20, it's called least, quatan, little, small. of insignificance. So those who teach against the obedience to the commandments are insignificant. Don't argue with them. They're insignificant. They're least. They have no importance, no gadol in the kingdom of Elohim. Their glory is from the world. They seek those things that are of the earth. They're under the rule of the law of the carnal mind and not the law of the spirit. And the Torah is the law of the spirit because it came forth from spirit. It says in Matthew that Elohim spoke his Torah to the people and they withdrew. And today you see that as the Torah of his commandments is coming forth, is being resurrected. You see many who withdraw back into this false grace doctrine. Why? Because they cannot contain, nor do they want or desire the holiness of Yahuwah. This is the end result of keeping the commandments, to be raised from unholiness to holiness. And they don't want it. So why argue with them? Don't give a dog a bone if he doesn't want it. But we who seek to, as Yeshua, fulfill and at the same time teach the commandments as the foundation of our lives, as the means by which we appropriate our faith unto salvation that we might enter into life, are called great. Godol Yikra Be Mokut Shamayim. We are called great in the kingdom of Elohim. Now there are certain scriptures that 
the Babylonians use to say that the law is ended. We know from the last study that the Torah is and the festivals, the holy days, and the rituals are the shadow of things to come. That means they have prophetic significance of things to come. And so we live under the shadow of his wings, the wings of the Almighty, El Shaddai. We live under this shadow. We participate in the holy days. We participate in the Sabbath. Why? Because they have prophetic significance. And by per participating in them, we're declaring the prophetic significance of those things that are to come that are in Mashiach, the substantial reality of these things. So now we must understand that the Torah is not ended. The Torah has not been abolished. And the testimony of Yeshua substantiate this fact. And once understanding this fact, we can move on to fulfillment, Kayin. We can move on to teaching the commandments without debate or argument, knowing that we are keepers of the commandments and the testimony of Yeshua. But we find in the scripture that is used, and we're going to come to an understanding of this, in Romans 10.4, in Romans 10.4, it reads, For Mashiach is the end of the Torah for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now this in the Babylonian system of religion defines end as no longer existing or have no longer significance. The Torah has no longer any significance in the life of those that believe in their concept of Jesus Christ, this man-made concept that they has given to man, this man on the wall, this gold and silver man that hangs from a cross, this false deity that they have given to man, this image of a beast, of the carnal man that they have given us. And we were fooled. But now we shall be fooled no more. So let's come to an understanding of what Paul is saying in this uh, particular scripture. For well, Mashiach is the end of the Torah. End. See, that's the key word. What does it mean? Comes from the Greek, the Koine Greek word, telos. Delos does not mean in, in the sense of abolishment. What it means is an outcome, a final product, an ultimate goal that is to be attained. Mashiach, in his resurrection and glorification, was the outcome of fulfilling, fulfilling the Torah and the Prophets. The outcome was his resurrection into life and his ascension into glorification with the Father, Yahuwah. They are one. He has entered back into oneness. He has become a life-giving spirit from Yahuwah. He is no longer in the flesh. It is, it, it is taught to us by the Apostle Shika, uh, Shilakim, the sent one. It is taught to us that we should no longer know him according to the flesh. Yes, we have known Mashiach according to the flesh, but now we know him no more. Why? Because he has become a life-giving spirit. He's not in the flesh. No, he's, he put off the flesh. He put it to death. And he was raised in a translated form, he put on the form of the Father and ascended into glory and became a life-giving spirit to us. This is what is taught in the scriptures concerning the Mashiach. This was the final product, his glorification. This is why he told Miriam, touch me not, do not hold on to me, do not contain me. 
in this position that I am in, in this situation I am, I have not yet ascended to the Father. It's not complete. The final product was when he entered into glory to fill all things. So we understand that telos, in, means a ultimate goal, an outcome, a final result, a final product that is to be attained through what? Fulfilling the Torah, fulfilling the Torah of his commandments so that we can enter into the fullness of Elohim, into the fullness of divine love, expressing divine truth our heart being conformed to a pattern of existence by which we can partake of divine nature and express deity, express the glory of Elohim. For he comes to be what? Glorified in his people. This is the testimony of Yeshua. Yeshua never gave a testimony that he was going to substitute himself on a cross so that you can continue to live in the debasement of sin. Whereas your testimony is, oh, yeah, I, I, I did wrong and I'm not perfect. Or saved by his grace. His grace is sufficient. No, the grace of Elohim that was poured out upon us teaches us one thing. To deny all unalikeness and worldly lust that we might live sober, righteous, and alike in this present world. This is the testimony of Yeshua. This is the testimony of his grace. It gives us the power to become sons of Elohim. It doesn't give us uh, 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 the weakness to remain in a state of the inferiority of the natural man. This is ridiculous. I sometimes wonder how I believe in this foolishness. But coming to the light of truth, I understand that in order for me to enter into life, I must keep, protect, guard, and fulfill his commandments. This is the testimony. Now, let me show you a deception here, how they use words in these translations. We see in Romans 4, it says that the ultimate goal, Mashiach, is the ultimate goal, the final outcome, the product of the Torah for righteousness to everyone who, Amuna, who supports the will of Elohim, who, who walks and lives. See, believing in the Western term is just a mental ascent, but in the Hebrew definition, it is an actuality of life to do what you believe, to support the will of the Father. That's what a Muna means. See? Those who receive the laws of Moses, they fell into the redundancy of ritualism. Thus Moses says, what he say? He said, the man who does these things shall live by them. Lighting candles, celebrating days without the understanding the prophetic significance. The rituals, they can't save you. Just lighting a candle and putting on Hebrew clothes and having a proper diet is good. It is a shadow of things to come. But the reality of it is in the spirit. The reality of it, we must embody. I will put my Torah in your mind and write it in your heart. This is what the apostle is trying to teach. That we're no longer under ritualism, but in fulfillment of Torah. We must fulfill Torah by the amuna, the actualizing, the actualizing of his will. And the fulfillment thereof. So we must understand that in telos, again, the final outcome, the final product, 
the ultimate goal that is to be attained. Put that in your mind so you don't be fooled anymore, thinking that in means abolishment. That's not what it means. Now, let me take you to 1 Timothy 5 and show you how they manipulate the translation. Because the same word that appears in Romans appears here, but they switch it around. In this English Bible, it says, Now the purpose of the commandments is love from a pure heart. That's not what it says. It says, Now the end, the ultimate goal, the final product, the telos, the ultimate goal that is to be attained of the commandments is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere amuna. See? So what he is teaching us, contrary to what has been taught about the teachings of Saul or Paul, is that the ultimate goal of keeping the commandments is to birth the divine love within the heart and a clean conscience through sincere amuna support, firmness, and belief in the will of Yahuwah. But they changed the word. They now translate telos as purpose. In Romans, they translate it as end in order to deduce in you a false ideal of these teachings. He's teaching the same thing that Yahshua taught. He that fulfills and teach the commandments shall be called great. Paul puts it this way. The ultimate goal of the commandments is a sense is what let's read it the ultimate goal the telos of the commandments is love from a pure heart it's the same thing Kepha taught that by obeying the truth we purify our hearts unto unfriended love love is the quality of divine nature that is manifested in those that receive it that through the promises of the new covenant, we become partakers of divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world. We become a tabernacle, a shukan of Yahuwah, of his divine substance and presence. Thus, Yahshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But let's concentrate on way. Derik in the Hebrew, Chodos in the Greek, and it means the same thing, a path, a road in which you walk. I am the path and the road in which you walk. The purpose I have, you are to have. The things that I do, you are to do. I am the way. You are to imitate the pattern of my existence. Because no man can come into the presence of the Father but by me, by this pattern of truth and this pattern of life. You see, we seek to attain something. We seek an end, the end, the ultimate goal, resurrection from spiritual death, resurrection into life and immortality. This is what is taught. Yeshua said, he that keepeth my word shall not see death. Yeshua said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who amuna in me, though he die, he shall live. And whoever lives in amuna, in me shall never die. Paul puts it this way. The last enemy to be conquered is 
death. So he has given us through the Basara, the doctrine of life and immortality, the conquest of death, the conquest of the natural man. Put it to death. He that amuna in me and dies. He's not talking about cessation of the body and spirit. He's talking about the dying of sin that produces death. See, we seek to be resurrected, raised up into a superior form of life that is related to the divine nature of Yahuwah. So what did the apostles say? as his goal and what he was seeking through this testimony of Yeshua, through this enlightenment of wisdom that was given to him. And he seen the ultimate goal and he stated the ultimate goal. He said in Philippians that I might know him, Yada, our intimacy of relationship, Yada, that I might attain an intimacy of relationship a conjugal union with him and the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Not just the power to get a job. Not just the power to buy a new car. Not just the power to sit in somebody's restaurant and be accepted. But the power of resurrection. The power to be raised from this infantile carnal man state into the superior state of divine nature. See, we, 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 we are settling for things that are infantile, things that relate to the flesh. But as the testimony of Yeshua says, the flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. See, we want that life, that life that is far superior to the natural man, that is far superior to the natural elements of this life. We want the supremacy of divine nature, the supremacy of the life of divine love and truth, expressing it and subjugating all things that does not conform to the will of the Father. Let me continue. And the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, the sufferings of temptation of sin, the sufferings of the conflicts of sin within the natural man of the flesh. The word became flesh. He put on an oppositional form to the divine nature and, and, and conquered that opposition. That was his suffering. I came not to do my will, but the will of the Father. The flesh didn't want to do it. He opposed the will of the flesh. He conquered the will of the flesh. He put it to death, being conformed to his death, being conformed to his death, a death that brings forth what? Resurrection. Why? Why does it bring forth resurrection? The results of sin is death. The results of fulfilling Torah, the results of fulfilling truth, and Torah is the truth, brings forth what? A death to the natural man and a resurrection of the man of the spirit, the man of divine nature. That if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead body, this dead body of sin that we so honor, this carnal man that we so put on a throne. But the apostle says, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Praise be to Elohim through our undone, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is the source his way, his pattern, 
of life and power by the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach HaKidosh, putting to death the Yitzhahara, the evil inclinations that arises from the darkness of our nature, putting it to death that we may attain the resurrection from this dead body. That we might enter into a state of life and immortality and rule over the earth as kings and priests. As long as you are subjugated to the Yitzhahara of the flesh, as long as you are not fighting it through the obedience of the commandments, lo, you're not fulfilling the testimony of Yeshua. You're not fulfilling the holy commandments that have been given to us, the commandments that are just, that are good, that are holy, that man, the oppressor, has so skillfully taught for us not to obey because he, he knows his laws can't redeem him. He knows his ways can't redeem him. He knows that his way can only bring you back into slavery. A slavery we seem to enjoy. But for that remedy, who are keepers of the commandments, keep them to fulfill that if by any means you might attain to the resurrection from the dead body by putting to death the Yitzhahara, the sinful inclinations, the opposition within you that opposes the law of Yahuwah, put it to death. If you believe in him, live like him. And his purpose was to, by the commandment, put to death the evil inclinations of the flesh so that we can be raised up in a position of life that is far superior to the carnal man and his world of confusion his religion of confusion, his false wit worship of the image of mortal man. For they, thinking themselves wise, had become fools and changed the image of the corruptible Elohim into an image made like man. You see it everywhere, everywhere you go. You see this cross and this, this man hanging on it. You see a picture of, of a man with a lamb. Oh, that's God. That's Jesus. That's that man-made Jesus with a doctrine that is ultimately opposed to the true teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach. We must understand this. We must embody this truth so that we can fulfill what it says in Deuteronomy. I shall make you the head and not the tail. You shall be a nation above every nation because you will function in a nature far superior to the nature of the flesh. You will function in a nature that is pure, that is holy, that is righteous and have the power to subjugate every element of creation that is oppositional to the will of the Father. This is our hope. Mashiach in you, the hope of glorification. And we can only seek it through a firm foundation built upon fulfilling the commandment. This is the testimony of Yeshua. The identity of the true nation is based upon these words and identified by these words. They who keep the misfos, the commandments, and the basara, the testimony of Yeshua. Brothers and sisters, Shalom Aleikim.